Okay, good afternoon. Um, thank everyone for thank you everyone for being here. My name is Monica Burks. I am policy counsel here at the Center for Responsible Lending. CRL is a nonprofit research and policy organization working to end predatory lending among other missions. And today we are very excited um, to gather you here because pursuant to that mission, we're sharing some key findings from updated research analysis of consumer transactions from over 6,000 users of EWA products in the last 18 or in a, during an 18 month window. Um, the results of this report analysis reveals what consumer advocates and financial regulators in many states are um, aware of that EWA products have a lot of similarities with payday lending products. That includes the triple digit APRs, um, a cycle of repeat use by consumers, which raises the cost that they pay to access these products, and the close relationship between users accessing EWA products and incurring overdraft fees in their personal bank accounts as a result. Um, so with that, we're grateful for this updated research as it will bolster the policy recommendations that advocates have been um, encouraging different regulators to follow, which is to make sure that these products are regulated as loans, that the interests that they can charge or the fees that they can charge are appropriately capped uh, so that it's responsible for users to access. So with that, I will enter, uh, pass it over to my colleague so she can go into the details. Thanks. Thank you, Monica, and thank you everyone for attending today. Uh, I'm Lucia Constantine. I'm a researcher at the Center for Responsible Lending, and I'll be sharing a bit more about our new report, Not Free, The Large Hidden Costs of Small Dollar Loans Made Through Cash Advance Apps. Earn wage access and cash advance are small short-term loans that are typically repaid on the consumer's next payday, either directly from a bank account or as a payroll deduction. Uh, consumers are accessing these loans via smartphone app, um, like the screenshot featured on the left, and a typical advance amount is between $40 and $100. Companies are using two business models. Um, the first, employer integrated, um, involves a consumer enrolling through their employer. Uh, they receive money into their bank account, and then uh, on payday, that the repayment is deducted directly from their paycheck. The second model is direct to consumer in which the consumer is uh, linking their bank account directly with the lender. And so when they take out an advance, the money goes into their account and on payday, the lender um, takes it out of their bank account. The focus of this research is on this model um, and the companies that we focus on employ this uh, business structure. Regardless of the business structure, consumers are being charged a variety of fees for these advances. Um, these include transaction fees, expedite or fast funding fees, which are charged to receive the advance immediately rather than wait one to three days. Um, some companies are employing a subscription or membership model in which a consumer is paying a monthly fee regardless of whether they're taking out an advance in a given month. And lastly, a number of companies are charging fees disguised as tips. Uh, and these are between can be between zero and $14. We see an example in the screenshot of some of the behavioral tactics that companies are using um, to encourage consumers to leave tips. So in this particular example, the company is claiming that tips are going toward providing healthy meals. Previous research by CRL and others has shown that the majority of consumers are paying expedite and fast funding fees and also leaving tips um, when tips are part of the business structure. Given the surge in these products, the Center for Responsible Lending was interested in understanding the following questions. Uh, we're interested in the cost of using these products. We wanna know what usage pattern looks like for EWA and cash advance. 
um, in terms of how frequently consumers are taking out these types of loans. And lastly, uh, what are the impacts on consumers' financial health and goals? To do this work, we partnered with Saver Life, which is a nonprofit advocacy organization that uses technology to improve the financial health of low and moderate consumers across the country. Um, members of Saver Life link either a checking or a savings account. And because of that, we received 18 months of anonymized transaction data from over 16,000 of their members. Uh, for a total of over 14 million transactions. And the data in this sample looks similar to what you might see on a bank statement. So some of the variables that we were able to see included the merchant, the amount of the transaction, the financial institution that a consumer uh, was affiliated with, and additionally, Saver Life provided us with um, demographics for some of their membership, which they receive through self-disclosed surveys. Analysis of these transactions showed that nearly 2,000 consumers had over 37,000 transactions associated with five EWA companies. The five companies that were included in our analysis were Bridget, Clio, Dave, Ernan, and FloatMe. Um, and our analysis involved matching advances taken out by consumers with the repayment. Um, but because we were only able to see these transactions for five of five companies, um, which are not the entirety of the EWA marketplace, our findings are likely an undercount. Beyond the quantitative analysis, uh, we also have a qualitative component to this research in which we recruited 18 participants who regularly use an EWA or an advanced product um, and asked them to respond to questions for over three weeks on an online discussion board. Zachary was one of those participants. He is a line cook in Mississippi earning between twenty-five dollars and $50,000 a year. And when asked what led him to use these products, he said, I believe the first time I just needed extra money because I wasn't getting many hours at work. And now I'm in a perpetual state of borrowing every check because I can't afford to give up the amount till next pay period. I consistently use Ernan, Dave, Cleo, and Bridget. I use them every paycheck. Using both the qualitative uh, piece and the quantitative analysis, we found that overdrafts on consumers' checking accounts increased after use of these products. Um, we also see that consumers aren't just using these products on a one-time basis, rather they're taking out advances repeatedly and often using more than one lender. Um, these advances represent small amounts of cash uh, that are repaid in short amount of time in a short amount of time, and consequently, consumers are paying a high price. And lastly, many low to moderate income consumers who are already living paycheck to paycheck um, are having trouble repaying advances while still staying afloat and managing to save. Um, one of the ways that companies are advertising these products are as a way to reduce overdraft fees. Uh, and we see in this slide a few examples of what that looks like on their websites. Um, so a number of companies are advertising these products as overdraft protection. Uh, you can see that one company has calculated how much members are saving in overdraft fees. And so to understand this claim, we looked at consumers in the transactions data set who had both overdraft and advanced transactions. 
we took the first instance of using an advanced product and looked at the overdraft activity three months prior and three months post. And on average, consumers had three overdrafts in the three months prior to using an EWA product and that increased to 4.7 in the three months after. We categorized users by their overdraft activity. So heavy users had four or more overdrafts in three months, moderate users had two to three overdrafts, and low users had one in three months. But regardless of the level of overdraft activity, after the first instance of an EWA product, we saw overdraft activity increase in the following three months. We saw that consumers are taking out advances repeatedly. Ayana says, I, used you, I usually use them every time I get paid because they take out their payment. And usually my check is short because I use the apps and I have to go back and reborrow almost every time I get paid. And Ayana's experience uh, was representative of what we found in the transactions data. Um, so 75% of users in our analysis took out an advance on the same day or next day that they made a repayment. This statistic is particularly troubling because it suggests that these consumers are getting pulled into a cycle of, of reborrowing and paying um, each time they're receiving a paycheck. Beyond that, 17% of users who took out at least six advances in one or more months accounted for nearly half of all of the advances in our data sample. In addition to taking out advances repeatedly, consumers are relying on more than one lender. So nearly half of users in our data set access advances from more than one company. And of those, 51% did so within the same month for at least half of the time that they took out advances. Um, and this suggests that consumers are paying fees over and over again, especially when they're using these multiple companies at the same time. Another way that companies are advertising these products are as instant um, or no interest and no mandatory fees. Uh, we see in this slide a few examples from their website of how they're talking about um, getting these advances. Um, of course, reading the fine print, we know that to receive an advance instantly, um, consumers are paying a fee. In our analysis, the average advance amount was $79 and consumers were repaying it within 10 days. So consumers are taking out uh, relatively small loans, but they are paying a high price because of those expedite fees and optional tips. And so when we calculate the annual percentage rate associated with a loan that was repaid within seven to 14 days, uh, we find the APR to be 367%, which is nearly comparable to the 400% APR of a typical payday loan. Beyond APR, we calculated the average fee to advance amount um, and for all five lenders, the average fee to advance amount was 12%, but we see that for some lenders, it was as much as 18 or even 26%. Um, the average cost per advance was $7, and that was there was also a range depending on the company. Lastly, the majority of um, consumers using these apps are already living paycheck to paycheck. And so having to repay in advance makes it much more difficult for them to catch up on their expenses um, or even to begin think about to think about saving. 
Um, Cody says, my future financial goals are just to be stable, to be honest, without the need for these extra services. It's frustrating because once you pay something, there's something else that pops up that you need to pay. I think it's affecting my future financial goals because when you use these apps, you're using money you're already having a hard time balancing. The findings of our research show that the frequent use and the high fees associated with these products make them harmful for consumers. And so consumer protections are needed. Um, we believe that another form of high cost credit isn't the solution to income insufficiency. Um, and so lawmakers and regulators should impose meaningful guardrails on the use of these products.